Real Country 1430 AM and 107.3 FM WRDN. And joining us right now, Durand, Arkansas School Superintendent Greg Dover-Spike as we get an update on the school board meeting from last week. And Mr. Dover-Spike, thank you for joining us today. Uh, well, with the uh, enrollment, if I'm uh, not mistaken, uh, we have higher enrollment this year, but we could see 39 additional students into the district next year? Yeah, you know, we're expecting, uh, we have a slight increase uh, as the year went from our third Friday in September to our second Friday in January. Uh, but we are expecting a, a decent sized jump next year. A lot of that has to do with uh, uh, the fact that we have a small graduating class this year, uh, our last small graduating class for a while. So uh, we are expecting a, a jump in enrollment uh, next year, like you stated, which is always a good thing. Now, the way school funding works, I've seen this before in action. So if we have more students, could that actually hurt us in funding? Uh, not necessarily uh, because we're not declining in enrollment anymore. Uh, when we were declining in enrollment, when you see the ups and downs, uh, then it does. So uh, your, your budget uh, or what you're allotted from the state is based on a three-year rolling average. Uh, so the average uh, three years in a row. And, and what you want is you either want a steady incline or a steady decline, preferably an incline. With the decline, you do get a declining enrollment exemption. It's when you go up a couple, then down a couple, and then stay the same where it, it, it can hurt you. So uh, no, it, it will not hurt us. It'll help us, uh, which is always a good thing. Talking with Duran, Arkansas School Superintendent Greg Dover, step by uh, this morning. Meanwhile, um, the board did approve uh, to extend the contract with the city of Duran for the school resource officer, which has really been a pretty nice uh, benefit for the school and really even the city. Yeah, you know, it's gone really well. Uh, I believe the city is taking up uh, the proposal uh, this week at their, or their next council meeting. I believe it's this week um, or coming up. Uh, but yeah, it's it's been a really good experience for us. I think the city's enjoyed it. I think it's given them an opportunity to you know to uh, to build some rapport and relationship with kids. Um, I think it's been a really good thing, uh, not only for uh, for our staff and our students, but it's also been good, uh, like you said, for the for the police department to come in. I know uh, Officer Bonnerup does a great job of getting in classrooms. Uh, you know, he's visible before school, after school, in between class periods, over the lunch hour. I mean, he's out. He's about. He's visible. Kids know him. Uh, not to mention he does some, you know, able to get into classrooms and do some things and, uh, you know, he has some things in the work before COVID hit in regards to, you know, bicycle safety and just, you know, other things like that, that are, uh, you know, beneficial things for our students, not just uh, during the school day, but, but in their outside life. So it's been a really good experience for all of us uh, and, and we're excited to continue to, to move forward with it and continue to grow on the program. Now, now, at least in the beginning, there was a grant available for the SRO. Was that extended or is that, and now we're, we're just kind of on our own on that? Yeah, we're on our own, um, which is good, uh, which is fine. I mean, it, it, it is what it is. It's one of those things that I think, uh, you know, we're getting benefit on. I know some communities are, are moving away from uh, an SRO model, uh, but I think we view our SRO as, as more of just a, more than just a, a police figure in the building. You know, he also uh, you know, mentor students, uh, you know, does some student mental health, uh, you know, isn't involved in, in a lot of those other areas, uh, you know, also gets involved in some things uh, within the building that frees up some of our principal's times as well to do other things. So, you know, there's a tremendous amount of positives that that Brandon does uh, in our building and, and uh, you know, and Stan's been really great to work with and, and Scott and the rest of the city council. So we're just really fortunate to have the relationship we have with those individuals. Talking with Durand, Arkansas School Superintendent Greg Doverspike uh, this morning. We have a new principal for the high school. Yeah, we do. Uh, we're, we're happy to, to announce uh, that, that um, Nick Gillis has accepted the position to replace Mr. Klaus. Uh, you know, first off, we just want to thank Mr. Klaus for, I believe it's 16 years he's been here. Um, you know, I've known, I've known Bill for a long time. Uh, he actually has hired me a couple of times in, in different school districts. I uh, once here, actually. Uh, but, uh, you know, Nick comes to us, uh, Plum City. Born and raised um, and spending, uh, finishing up, I believe, his sixth year at Clear Lake as the middle senior high school principal up there. So comes to us with some experience. He's really excited to get into the community and get into the district and, um, you know, comes uh, with, with uh, very positive recommendations and, and references and, um, you know, went through the, was the, the top choice of the screening committee and, and the interview committee. And, and we're really excited uh, to, to have him and get him going, but also, you know, we just want to make sure we, we all appreciate all the work that, that Bill did for the community and the kids and the district and wish him the best and a, and a much deserved retirement. 
Um, now, uh, yeah, Mr. Gillis will be coming. He'll be like visiting the school off and on here for the rest of the year. So we have somewhat of a transition. Yeah, he will. You know, great question. Actually, Nick was in the building on Monday. They had a day off in Clear Lake. So he spent some time with uh, with me on Monday and with Mr. Klaus on Monday. Uh, went over a few things, actually signed the contract and then went over a, a handful of other uh, just things kind of, uh, you know, we had an uh, initial conversation related to kind of transition and, and next year. And then he yeah, had a series of questions for, for Mr. Klaus related to building operations. Uh, so they sat down and talked and uh, for, you know, for a couple hours, but yeah, he's going to be spending some time here. Uh, you know, we haven't identified those dates as of yet, but our plan is to get him in the building here that, uh, you know, for a few days between now and the end of the school year uh, for him, uh, just to kind of see how the building operates, see how the building runs um, and just kind of meet students, meet staff, start to build some of those relationships and get himself familiar with with the building and the, and the people in it uh, to make his transition a, a little bit easier. And there's some things as we're starting to, to transition planning wise as an administrative team for next year, uh, you know, we're gonna start including him on the conversations as well. So that was part of the conversation him and I had is, is kind of, uh, you know, just some things to think about that we're considering for next year that, that we would like to have his input on as well. And so it's it's a transitional plan that's still kind of in the making, but uh, definitely it, it's one of the positives of getting this done that when we got it done is we were able to create this transition plan. You know, when I transitioned to be a high school principal my first time, or my, my high school principal job, you know, I really didn't have much of a transition uh, plan. It was, I was hired like the 1st of June and started the 1st of July and um, there wasn't a lot of time to transition. Uh, you know, so it's nice to be able to transition with Nick and, and as Bill goes, and, and Bill's also been very willing to re, you know, to, to be there for Nick for the next couple of years or however long you need to answer questions or, you know, how did you do this or where exactly is this document again and that kind of stuff. Talking with the Durand Arkansas School Superintendent Greg Doverspike uh, this morning. Superintendent Doverspike on funding um, from the COVID-19 pandemic. There's been things coming out of Madison where if you weren't open, you're not going to get funding or if you were, you will. And then there's other funding that's totally different. Uh, how is all of this affecting the school district? Right now, the, the changes that the Joint Finance Committee made at the state level related to the ESSER 2 funding uh, has no impact on us. Um, ESSER 2 was just the, uh, the, the second COVID relief. It was part of the second COVID relief bill. Um, it's, it's probably more how, how uh, people have he heard it, us in the educational sector refer to it as ESSER 1, ESSER 2, and then the, uh, the, the House and the Senate, the House will, uh, is supposed to be passing ESSER 3 possibly this week, and the Senate will maybe be taking it up next week. That's kind of something that's been in conversations. Uh, but um, right now it doesn't impact us, uh, but, but I'm, I'm glad you asked that, Brian, because one of the things I really want people to understand is there's a lot of conversation out there at the national level related to you know, schools not being open and, and, you know, this and that and the other thing. And, you know, I just want people to understand our, our staff, uh, our students, our community, our custodians and the board, everybody has done a really good job of ensuring that we can be open as much and as often as we can. And I want people to understand our staff really uh, want the kids in the building, are, are relishing the opportunity to have the kids in the building. Um, and they're excited. Uh, and, and by no means does some of the conversation being had at the national level, uh, include what's going on here locally in Durand, because that, that's not what, what we're experiencing here. Talking with Durand, Arkansas School Superintendent Greg Doverspike. Finally, uh, Superintendent Doverspike, going to be a change with school board meetings as um, they won't be on, on Zoom anymore? No, the board has decided uh, to move the board meetings to uh, back to in-person. Uh, you know, administratively, we're going to have a conversation coming up this week uh, about looking at, at, at possibly being able to live stream them. We, we haven't gotten that far into the conversation. We got a little bit of time yet before we have to finalize that, but uh, the ability for people to sit at home and actively participate in a board meeting uh, will not be there. You will not be able to do public comment from home any longer. Uh, if you would like to do public comment, you're gonna to have to come to the building. Uh, I'm not saying that we're not gonna to continue to explore the possibility of people being able to watch the board meeting from home, but the opportunity to live uh, to Zoom and publicly participate participate by uh, participating during one of the citizens comment periods uh, is not going to be uh, available going forward. All right. Well, again, Superintendent Doverspike, we appreciate you joining us today. Thank you very much. Grand Arkansas School Superintendent Greg Doverspike, you're listening to WRDN.